Welcome in you cheap beggars to Discount, the bargain bin gaming podcast hosted by three people so cheap they have carefully examined inflation charts to see how outraged they should be about the PS5 Pro. That's fair. I'm your host, yeah. Josh, <laughs> and plugging into player two. I'm Darren, hello, and being pulled from store shelves because of low sales. It's Karis, and she's not here. She's not pulled. She's not here. She, she is, uh, she's too old. Too old, so she's gone. Um, no, she's uh, moved from, like, the top <laughs> shelf of game to the alphabetical bit. Yes, she, well, she's in the, she literally is in the bargain bin now, unfortunately. Yes. Um, but yeah, no, Karis isn't here. Um, she turned an age yesterday, was out, um, and she is not well enough to be here today. Um, and as such, we are recording in a slightly different fashion. We are doing yeah. it over Discord, so who knows if this is going to work? We love changing technology last second and making our lives miserable. I think it's like the last three recordings have all just been <laughs> completely uh, different from what we're used to. Oh, yeah, we had it with We've gotten too, uh, too comfortable. We need to change. Uh, that's it. it was it four people with two mics, three people yeah. with one mic, two yeah. people with two mics over Discord. We're just trying everything out. We'll, we'll get something to fit eventually. It'll work. It'll work eventually. Our podcast but, next week will be like gang vocals. We'll put three <laughs> mics facing outwards in the middle. We'll get about twenty people. And we'll just yell. Oh, that's that is not how all, with all our personalities. That's how it normally goes. Anyway, is, uh, it sounds like there's about twenty people in the room yelling. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we're back. It's September. Um, it isn't a fight time. It's us to reflect over the month of September. Um, and I think this is technically the first episode of season four. Um, it is. It okay. is. So, yeah. And we've started off with this is Karis's first part of the punishment by not being here for one episode. But yes, we're looking back at really the punishment. <laughs> Probably not. No. Uh, so, yeah, September. It was fine. It was wet. We've definitely hit fucking autumn here now. It's it's miserable. And the, the, the weather's been bizarre. It, it was like just, super wet and then super warm, and now it's super wet again. I mean, it's very fluctuating, much like it has been for uh, PlayStation in the month of September, yes, really, hasn't it? they've been having a time. <laughs> miserable time, happy time, miserable time, happy time. So that's, we love to shit on Xbox here. We like to have a little shit on Nintendo at times. And PlayStation, to be honest, we normally let slide a little bit more than we should do. But we not do. this month, not this month. Stupid PlayStation. We, so, within ourselves, need to be equal opportunity shitters. Yes. And so I think that means that when they deserve it, PlayStation need to be shown. So we will shit on them and praise them in equal measures exactly. <laughs> at this point. First bit we need to talk about is um, potentially the hardest bit of news I've had to swallow this entire month, um, which is the death of Concord. It's sad, man. Oh. It's really sad. What's sadder is I was trying to get the pattern real hard. You nearly got there. I got to like level 76 to try and get the last trophy and I'm, I'm gutted that I didn't. But yeah, 11 days Concord, Concord lasted before it was unceremoniously ended with an update then an error message when you try to get in. <laughs> it, it's one of the... It's just... It is just sad that like when a regular game doesn't sell, it just doesn't sell and at least you can still enjoy it. The saddest thing about Cold God is because it was an online shooter. Yeah. The fact that it didn't sell kind of fucked it for everyone, even those who did buy it, because it meant there was no one to play against. Well, I mean, we played it quite a lot for the first... Well, for, we did. I would say until the announcement came, and then I think you and my sister promptly gave up on it, and I be <laughs> was belligerent in what I was doing. Um, but we never had a problem finding a match. Like, there was no, no. real wait times for us. Um, I'll, I'll be honest, I had trouble finding a match um, after the announcement came, which was weird. Yes. It was like everyone did just abandon it immediately. Well, but I everyone... jumped in for a bit to be like, oh, I'll just, uh, I'll just play it, why not? And couldn't find a game. I was like, okay, well, I guess I won't. Everyone moved from the base, um, like, standard, like your brawl ones or your catch the points. They moved to the one we could get the more XP on, and they were just going in there and killing themselves to move up quickly, which wasn't wasn't a great way to play. But you were able to get to level level 100, get your platinum, and be one of the 69 people who managed to get it on um, 
Nice. On True Trophies, I think it was. Yes, 69. And then after it died, like two days afterwards, a 70th appeared. But I think it's because there were more people who had the Platinum than they moved. Uh, they actually logged into the system. Yeah, so it registered. Yeah, updated. Um, but yeah, it's, it, it died. It's sad. We'll see what happens with it. But the director has been moved from a director position to another position. Yeah. It, it's not looking good. It sounds like they're just going to let it die, which seems incredible for a 400 million project. I, 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 I two things. <laughs> I still feel like it will come back. Um, I think it will come back in some regard. I don't know quite how it's going to come back. I just have a feeling that you don't put that much work into it. Have it be live for 11 days and then go, well, guess that flopped. Wipe your hands of it. Move on. It seems like, mad if they do. I feel like the assets put into it means it has to come back in some sort of form. Well, uh, I, I, I think we've both discussed that there was a chance that it might come around at the same point as it was it zero or was it secret uh, level? Secret level. Secret level. Yeah. Um, but there's the concern because I think Marvel Rivals comes out, I think, two days before Secret Level like, comes it out. It might or just like that. die again. <laughs> and it might die again. There was thoughts that they might just hold off for a month. They might relaunch it in the new year. We'll just have to wait and see what happens to Concord. Yeah. But, but um, the, uh, the 400 million, that came out very recently. And it's it's one of the pieces of news that more than any, no one can seem to decide if it's real. Yes, yeah. Because one guy came out and he's like, oh, my source said it cost 400 million. And I saw an article from another source that was like, 400 million means it cost twice as much to make as Horizon Forbidden West. And it also had no marketing. I don't know if... Yeah. A, feels bizarre if that much money went in and it was that poorly marketed. But also, would you put that much money in and not allow it to be marketed? Well, it's the, it's the question, is it part of the acquisition of it all, of the studio? Is it part of... Yeah, you a know, lot of people are like, where did that number come from? It what feels does that of, mean? It feels made up. It does feel made up. But I mean, there's also news articles going on. It took eight years of development, and they've come out and said, no, we thought about it eight years ago. It took four... It, it was like four yeah. years of development. Totally there are other people years. said it um, It killed um, sequels to Infamous and things like that. Like, eight years ago, it's like it wasn't even being developed at that point. Nope. It's, just, it's, it's just so much... It's, it's, they're using it as almost um, the kicking. <laughs> I don't know. They, just... they are. I, I think just it's sad that it didn't work and it's sad yeah. that it died, but it also feels like the internet is so happy to have a collective thing to kick yeah. that they just won't let it die. It was no. starting to fall out of the public conscious and then someone had to come in and be like, oh my God, it costs so much money. That's fucking dumb, right? It's like, yeah. just let it die. Just let it go. Well, Shit yeah. Dead, dead, um, a dead thing for PlayStation, but don't worry, it could be revamped in the next Astrobot where we see a little character dressed as one of the characters from Concord. Who would when you dress him as? What, who, who, uh, who do you think? I mean, it'll probably be, it would probably be something like Lennox, but realistically, the one that would make more sense is, what was the big robot? Something one? Oh, one-off. One off, yeah. I, I'd like a lot Astrobot. That'd be lovely, but it wouldn't happen. No. But everyone did love Astrobot, so that was the next sort of like. It then went the kill Concord. Yeah. Then Astrobot came out, and everyone went fucking mental for it. It hasn't performed as well as they'd like it to, but everyone's loving it, and it has done insanely I, well from the start. Like like that. Shocked that it hasn't performed well. I can't work out why it hasn't performed well because this is exactly what people are clamoring for when they shit on games like concord and then I this think... comes out and also doesn't sell it's like what what do you want i do think this came out the wrong time this needed to be a christmas release and it would have done absolutely like a month later. yeah because like people people are going to buy this for their kids for christmas they are they that's just what it is I, um to be fair, i still don't think it's doing badly i think it had really underwhelming physical sales is what i saw Yes, yeah. I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if it's still doing all right. I can see this is. as being a real fucking digital game. And I, I mean, it is doing well. People are loving it, and it's obviously doing fine. And everyone's like happy about PlayStation again. We'll talk a bit more about Astrobot when we talk about games we've been playing this month. But yeah. um, it looks good. And then um, there was the sort of announcement that we're going to do um, some sort of 
tech demo nine minute release and everyone's like oh it's gonna be ps5 pro ps5 pro and it was ps5 pro and it then was. they did the announcement where everyone was like oh it's a little bit different it's a little bit i might be interested in this i might be interested in this and then they went hey would you like to spend 700 pounds for one um with no disk drive <laughs> i th- this is the piece of news like People are often disproportionately angry about a piece of news. This is the piece of news I feel I am disproportionately, like, unangry about. Okay. I think it is an insane price point. It is. Yeah. However, under no circumstances is this meant to be bought by everyone. No, it's not. It's, it's like, the, this I... is meant to be bought by people who have £700 to drop on an incremental upgrade. I also but... think there has been a lot of hyperbole going the other way, where people are like, oh, you're spending £700 for like not much difference. Did you see the... Uh, what's the name? The fucking channel. Uh, I think it was a Digital Foundry video. Okay. Where they showed Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the upgrade. No, I haven't seen that. It it genuinely looks great. And I, people I'm in the sh- comments are being like, oh, I mean, there's not much different. It's like people are watching this on their phones in 480p and are seeing a significant difference. It's there is definitely a difference. As you said, it's 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 a luxury purchase. It's it, like there are people who will trade in their PS5 to get this. There are people who go for the iPhone Pro Max, you know, like though like you go for those ones if you want that little bit of luxury, but you don't need it. It's not necessary for every game. No, I'd love to have one. I'm not mm-hmm. going to have one because I don't it. have seven hundred pounds to drop on it. But I'm not going to sit there and be like, "What the fuck, Sony? Why won't you like, you know, why can't I buy this? Why are you making it cost so much?" It's like they're making it cost so much because that's how much it fucking costs. I think I think a big part of this is obviously we had the PS4 Pro, which came out, and there was a reason for the PS4 Pro. There were a bunch of bugs. There were a lot of like issues that people were having yes. with the PS4, and the PS4 Pro came out cheaper than the ps4 and fixed a lot of those issues um and you're like oh great that's that works really nicely and then they've gone hey you guys haven't really been complaining about the ps5 that much but here you go you're expecting a pro so here's a pro but it's gonna be more expensive so it's i i my only issue with it i think is that they're releasing it without the disk drive which you have to buy separately and they've already gone basically out of stock on disk drives um it's kind of insane (laughs) and you also have to buy a stand if you want it to go vertical (laughs) yeah like Come on now, <laughs> just that bit is insane. Like, why are you so keen to just not have digital or not have physical? It, it I, doesn't make sense. Bad. I mean, it does make sense. They they make more money this way because yeah. you buy it digitally, you don't really own it. They can fucking cancel it whenever they want to. You've lost your item, and you can't share it or trade it back in. Or you know, it's it's not you know, it's it's, it's just lo- physical loses yeah. the money. It does. That's, that's a long and short. Physical loses the money. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm, yeah. like, I'm, I'm not as bothered about this as most. I think it does look like a significant upgrade. I think one of the biggest concerns is that this is like a marker going forward for like how much the PS6 might cost. Yes. I don't yeah. think that's the case. I think this is going to carry forward for another like two, three years. I think we got maybe a little bit more time than that personally for this one. I think we got another four years in the life cycle. I, I can see another four years in the life cycle, but then I think... It's going to be an incremental upgrade over this, by which time the price will have come down. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think this is the target that the 6 is aiming for anyway. Because what yeah. it really does is it takes the point at the start of the game where you have to say, I want performance or I want fidelity, and it goes, fuck that, have both. Yes. Yeah, I think that's, that's all 6 is going to aim for as well. And I think by that point, 6 will launch for like 550 yeah, that's that'd be fair. fine. Well, that's, that's fine. That, well, no, but that's that makes sense. That's probably what is going to happen with it. And yeah. you know what? That's that's great. And I'll I'll look forward to getting it when I get a, a six. Because even if they do make a nice thirtieth anniversary edition come out, it doesn't. It almost tempts me, but not enough to go for a PS5. It's nice though, isn't it? Oh man, that was a real high point. The thirtieth anniversary edition to make it look like a PS One. Even the box was to come. The box like is PS1. so good. It's so good. The controller looks amazing. They've even got one for the PS Portal. They're going to have it, which I, I don't yeah. really care for that one. The only thing I'm disappointed in is they can't just buy the plates on their own. Um, I know because I would buy the plates on their own. Like, I'd I would buy just, the plates. but 
I don't want to buy another PlayStation just for the, the sake of the look, um, but I will buy a controller that looks Plus, like, like that. You can only get the Pro in the bundle, which is easy to get. It costs north of a grand. Yeah, yeah. It's, and that, it, it seems lovely, but I, the controller is all I'm interested in at the moment, and we'll just see if we can get anything. I'm not, I, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. There but, was the um, little like, bonus goodies that came in a, the bundle as well. Is that like the cord wrap ups, which were like the, the, the fucking uh, the zip ties, which are the symbols? It. Yeah, <laughs> it's so good. It's got some really nice features, and it's the sort of thing I've been waiting for PlayStation to do because yeah. I still think like Xbox really like outrank them with their uh, their controllers. Even with Astrobot that recently came out, which might be their best one to date, it's not quite as good as say. Um, you know, as as the uh, Starfield one that came out for Xbox. Yeah, the Starfield you know, one is one of the nicest controllers I've ever seen. So it's it's just, but this feels like they've put a bit of love and thought into it, which is nice. Yeah. It's just be good if they did that for all things. The, the, um, the other bonus I was trying to remember is there's a uh, charging cable that comes with a bundle. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the end to go in the console is shaped like a PS1 memory card. Oh, really? That's it's uh, lovely. See, it's stuff like that which I get sucked into and I really shouldn't. I really shouldn't. Just um, like a little sex. Little sex, you know, they're nice. Yeah. Um, so that was their, their ups and downs. And then they've had their PC release this month as well of God of War, yep. which um, there was an upgrade where they've made the puzzles a little less obvious, which is good. Um, but it's been hitting with some real middling reviews on play, on PC. But they all seem to be about the PS network, um, PSN ID, which they're all complaining about again. And I'm not going to spend ages on this because people seem to want to complain about it all the time. And you know what? It's part and parcel of it. You've got a Steam account when you want to play your Steam games. You've got an Epic account when you want to play your Epic account. Like, you need a PS network to play a PlayStation game. Yeah, the, the only is. time I do agree with this one is that there are some countries where you can't get an account. Oh, really? Is it? Yeah, so this was the big thing when it uh, happened to Helldivers as well, is there are certain countries where you can't sign up for a PlayStation Network account, which means you can't then play the game, the game you've purchased on Steam right. through Steam. That's, that's... Apparently I mean, there's some, like, some dodgy workarounds and PlayStation aren't completely against them, which is nice. No, and I mean, it sounds awful. If you're in that country, you probably know, should know better, but I'm not saying that that's going to sort of let, let it go by, but they they did revoke it on something I can't remember what it was, but it's a yeah. sort of slip, it's a slippery path, and they're not gonna they're not gonna change now. They're, this no. is what it is going forwards. I, I get just, it. I just think like it's it's a shame for those people. Oh, definitely, definitely. I'm not saying that you shouldn't be allowed to play it, but yeah, if there's dodgy workarounds, dodgy work around it. I mean, yeah, it's a joy of PC gaming. You can just stick a VPN on or do whatever you want to do. You know, you yeah, can do anything. Exactly. You can so, you can trick anything. Yeah, yeah so that's that's part of the, the pleasantry of having a PC. And let's be honest. Most people on PC aren't buying all their games anyway. They're downloading them if they're expensive and get yes, them for free. So, exactly. So stop complaining. Just do it like, like, like you've done with every other bloody game you've bought for Shut up, PC games. <laughs> um, so that is our little shit on um, PlayStation. Should we move to shitting on Xbox instead? Oh, hell yeah. Our, our, our fucking bread and butter. Our bread and butter. It's a smaller shit, but it's still a big, pretty big shit, actually. They, they've they um, laid off a 650 more workers in September. Um, their third set of layoffs this year is all following the Activision Blizzard merger to restructure, to resettle with all the, uh, the acquisition. It's just bad. You know, it's just sort of a big state on the gaming community in general that there's jobs being lost everywhere. I think they've laid off more already this year than all of last year combined just but, having the best time but they're, they're saying that like oh that we should only be hit, laying off as many people as we did last year you should really need to be laying off people that many people every year there's obviously an issue with what's going on i don't know what else to say there's clearly something going a bit off over there yeah where like you can't simultaneously be like ah oh, everything here is going great as you are repeatedly laying off a bunch of people <laughs> no honestly the boat is clearly isn't... wrong <laughs> the boat's meant to be filling with water it's absolutely fine yeah, it's, it's a feature <laughs> it's, it's, but it's funny also... enough they bought out bethesda so they could use the it's a feature not a bug to describe <laughs> their business practices <laughs> Oh, uh, it's 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 messy but again it's a side of it's, it's an industry sort of standard now that there's layoff um although PlayStation have been pretty good for their layoffs. Um, Xbox haven't been yet. 
Um, there, are, Nintendo's quite is doing well for them as well. So I don't know what's going on with Xbox, but then it could be worse. You could have all of your team just walk out of your studio, couldn't you? You could. Like, you you Anna, could. That would be bad. Like Anna Turner did, where was it all twenty five people? I think it's yep. twenty five. Just did a group resignation and walked out. Um, so this this was one particular part of Anna Turner. I can't remember which bit it was. Yeah, I've, but yeah, um, they all just all just left. Just up and went. It was all part of like the partnering with Remedy Entertainment or something like that, isn't it? And, yes. And like the leadership practices and basically, I think Annapurna has been in issues for a little while um, with both their since Annapurna Pictures, I think, and Annapurna Interactive, which is Annapurna Interactive is is the gaming side and Pictures is the, the film side, and both have been struggling for a little while, even though they've been releasing some really good games. Um, I think yeah. they've just been having like the father of the, the father of the owner has been coming in to bail them out um, quite a bit, but then it's just it's just throwing money at problems, poor management, horrible deadlines, and then just going fuck you, off you go, not work, not not doing this anymore, which is interesting anyway. Um, I, I was curious to look this up because I I'd heard sort of mixed things about what happened. Yeah, uh, it's apparently uh, the entire. St- gaming division resigned after failing to convince the owner to let them spin off its games division into a new company oh okay because basically the the part the main thing that Annapurna does is publish they're yeah. a lot like Devolver in that they publish a lot of indie games and people think that they make all the games yes because I, I was in Annapurna impression... were making their own games right as well and I think that team wanted to spin off and be their own thing so they're not lumped in with all the other titles coming out under Annapurna where they're just being published. Right, that makes sense. So I'm, I'm fairly certain you have stuff like... Uh, I don't think Stray was made by... Because you've got Stray, you've got Outer Wilds, you've got... Like Neon, Neon White is another one from recently. But they, they, in my head, I was like, oh, Annapurna is making quite a lot. When they said 25, I was like, that's a really simple team to be pumping out games as yeah. much as they are. Um, but it makes sense that, you know, it is just there. Yeah, so Stray is made by a developer called, like, Blue 12, who I've which, never heard of. Which would explain why um, they're annoyed by the partnering with Remedy Entertainment as well, yes. because it sort of then takes... There's definitely Undermines no them a bit. And like, are they being expected to make new Remedy titles? Yeah. That so. people are just going to lump in under that same Annapurna bracket? Yeah, it's, it, it makes sense. It's, it just feels like a, a company that's been horribly mismanaged for ages. Oh, it's been divided. It's so I think it's like, I would say it's since 2018, I think, is where they've really started struggling. So the past six years have been a bit of a fucking mess over there. So, yeah. Yeah. Shout well, to Stray. Shout out to Stray. Great, great game. Um, but, and should we move on to, we'll move on to a bit of Nintendo now as well. Yeah. Because a little Nintendo shit. Um, not really a shit, they're, but they're suing Pal World, is they the are. short. Um, and it's not a copyright infringement, but a nope. patent infringement that they're yes. seeing them over, which is a lot more interesting. So that makes it so it's probably not to do with the creation of the characters. It's not to do with how the characters look like all those bits in there. It's going to be to do with the mechanic they've got within the game. And it sounds like it's partly to do with capturing the animals and the utilization of balls yes. in the game. I, um, I believe the patent I saw was something to do with throwing an object to capture a creature using a dual input of a stick and a button press. So, yeah, it's 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 specific. And you know what? It, I mean, they've been looking because they, they announced that they were looking into this back. I want to say back in like March or something this year. Yeah. Um, and they spent a good sort of six months putting together something very obviously airtight. It's. It's Nintendo. They very rarely lose when they go to court, do they? Let's be honest. No, they, 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 they do. They, they have lawyers there. It is only going to court in Japan at the moment. Yeah. So obviously they then have issues with Japan's having the, uh, access to the title. It's just whether it goes further after that. Um, Th- this is a fascinating story. Yeah. Because you can sort of see both sides of it. Yeah, where like obviously Power World came out and we're like we'll fight this case because we want to uh, maintain the ability for indie publishers to pursue their ideas without being like threatened out of existence by a big company. Yeah, which of course is fair enough. That's entirely true. You don't want just basically the big three game monopolies and all these ideas. Mm-hmm. But also, 
if you legitimately don't believe that Pal World is a blatant ripoff, <laughs> are you blind? Are you okay? I mean, I I understand them going. Look, we're unaware of specific patents. Going, I wasn't aware there was a patent in place for someone to throw like this specific patent, and we've made a mistake there. Like, I, we're unaware of it when we made the game. Like, that's fair. You could yeah. say that, but by the same token, you can be unaware of something. Like, I'm unaware that I shouldn't I shouldn't drive over someone in my car. It doesn't mean yeah. you're going to jail for it. It's it's, it's not. It, they're going to lose. Is the long and short is what I think. I, I think so. Like um, the the only concern they have is that there are a lot of games that have similar ideas that they haven't pursued. I think it's because of the size of this. This has been phenomenally successful, hasn't it? Yeah. That's the thing. It's and made I, so I, much people money. People are looking at it quite cynically and being like, "Ah, oh, just are they just pursuing it because it's big and like pursuing it now instead of when it launched because of the money?" But I also think this one is like so blatant in places. I I don't think they've gone for it now because of the money. Um, because it started making money very quickly anyway. Yeah. It, I think it's more they want to you you want to make sure you've got an airtight case. Also, I think Powell's got quite a backing from Microsoft as well. Yes. So it's like where <laughs> how far do you want to pursue this issue? Um there's Sony sat in the corner watching these two other the other two Titans fight it out whilst they just continue to uh, stop their own games. But yeah, it's, it's, I, it's, 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 it's I think there's also a thing that like there's a aspect of patent law that like you have to kind of fight over it. Yeah, and I know I think Disney does this a lot, where you have to fight for your patent or else you lose it. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. could see as well because they have a new Legends game coming out. And the Legends games are the ones that use the mechanic in this patent. Right. And they've just renewed the patent in like June or July or something. Okay. So I can see it. Like they're going after it now because they have their new game coming up and they want to like narrow down their focus to be like, right, we have now got our sole approach as the people making this style of game. But I, I don't know. I can see it both ways. Mm -hmm. But also, I just think, like, it's so blatant. It's very it's blatant. So blatant. <laughs> it's very blatant, and you don't want to lose something like this because then what's to stop someone making a retro-style Pokemon game and just getting away with it? Because like, it just starts building and building, doesn't it? You know, that, yeah. That you you got you have to put your foot down, or you lose, or you lose. That's everything. the thing. There, there, people reference other games that are doing very similar ideas. Yeah, and it's like, oh, I I look at them. And I don't know if this is just me, but I look at them and I'm like, oh, you know, they're doing the same ideas. It's sort of like more homage than anything. Mm. When you look at Pal World, you're like, that is Pokemon. Well, everyone said it, didn't they? As soon as yeah. they came out, there wasn't a single person who looked at that and didn't think it was Pokemon. So... People are referencing the game Temtem, which is like a big game like that on the Switch store. But right. no one looked at Temtem and went like, oh, it's Pokemon with X. They went, oh, yes. you know, it's using like similar ideas. It's sort of and I'll watch that style. Power World dropped and immediately everyone went, oh, it's Pokemon with guns. Well, you yeah, can't that's... have that. <laughs> That you was, can't let that go. That was the whole thing. But it is, I mean, Temtem's just a creature collection adventure, which I get, but it's, that's similar to like a Pikmin or, a, you know, it sounds yeah. awful. Like, I think a creature collection is di different to a, I mean, looking at Temtem, there is quite a lot in there that is similar to it. Yeah. But it's, yeah, where do they draw the line? It's going to be exactly. interesting to see how that unfolds is the, is yeah, the long and short. Um, last bit of news before we look at the other media in there is uh, Yakuza had a big sort of a announcement of stuff they were doing, and they've announced their next game, which is um, Pirate Yakuza. Pirate Yakuza in Hawaii. Obviously. obviously. I am so excited. I oh, The worst thing is I need to play the other one first, which is to play all the other ones first. But uh, I did learn recently this isn't a full-length game either, which makes it a bit more palatable. Oh, is it not? Because I know it was quite shocking because obviously it's only been a year since Infinite Wealth yeah. came out. So is it more like a DLC-length game? So they it? described it as being somewhere between a full game and Gaiden, which came out le about this time last year. Yeah, yeah. Because Gaiden's like a 35-hour story, I think. 35-hour story, like 50-hour full completion. And then the regular games, like hundreds on fucking hundreds. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is estimated to be somewhere in the middle. I think this is going to okay. be like a 55 to 60 hour story, maybe like 100 completion. So, Which is a nice length for a pirate Yakuza. So the way it is, it's taking on from the perspective of the antagonist of the series, isn't it? Um, yeah. What's his name? Um, Majima. Majima. Bye bye, Goro Majima. He wakes up on an island uh, yep. with amnesia and starts fighting like in a swashbuckling way, but it's set in current times and will link with the story of Infinite uh, Wealth. Infinite Wealth. So yep. it's just, it feels like they're doing like a big DLC, which is uh, with a fun, cool twist to it. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm all in. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what it looks like when they give a bit more. I know there was like a seven minute announcement trailer or something for it. Am I right? It, it looked wild. It, it looks, looks yeah. absolutely insane. And I'm all about it. <laughs> Perfect. I'm so excited. Very excited for that. Um, I mean, what we can do then is transition into media stuff going on, because yep. at the same time, Yakuza, as a, the series is now wrapped, ready. They've put some posters out, um, and it's coming out in October, I believe, now. Yeah, um, I did see this. Interested so to see how it goes. It's got some interest. The reason I thought I'd talk about it as well is the they were told the lead actors not to read or play any of the games. Oh. So who knows? Who knows what is going to end up being like? They obviously didn't want them influence. All I will say is that they've done very well in the costume department. Um, oh, good. The suit that um, the main guy Kiryu uses, Kiryu, yeah. Kiryu I, can't remember, I can never get his name right, Kiryu, um, is, is wearing is spot on. It's that perfect. lovely red shirt, you know, the grey the gray suit. It just, just everything was perfect. Right? But yeah, it just looks like they're going to do a really good job with it. Um, I'm curious if they're adapting one of the games or if they're doing something independent with those characters. That's what I think is, is going to happen with it, um, is it's going to be these characters that we know, but in a different sort of story. Um, yeah. But, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, because that's obviously, like, only a couple of weeks away that it's going to be out. Yeah, um, it's one of the ones I understand them asking not to play the games, because... If you played the games and then tried to channel a guy who breaks someone's face against a bar one second and then is happily clapping along to karaoke the oh, next, yeah. I don't think you could play that. I, there were some comments I saw about karaoke, but I think karaoke is not going to be featured in it, is what, uh, it was, 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 what, it, was what it said. But I, I don't know if it, that is the case or bad not. Bad adaptations, uh, 0 out of 10. Well, it's my karaoke. Can kind I of talk about bad adaptations? Uh, <laughs> the, Minecraft, the Minecraft movie uh, trailer came out, and fuck me, does that look bad. You always wonder if it can get worse, and it continues to. I'm oh, impressed. I mean, we had Borderlands, which was an absolute dumpster fire, and then Jack Black went, I'll be in another yep. movie about a video game, and I am Steve, and it just looks awful. I just I, don't I'm like, it. I'm interested whether he's just hanging on until what ends up being good. Um, like if he maybe. continues to be in them, will what eventually come back around to being good? I mean, it can't get this. This looks like the worst movie of all time. Um, I mean, I want to see how bad it is, but I won't be going to the cinema to see how bad it is. Um, it just all of it looks awful. I don't want to even spend any more time on it. It just looks terrible. And I'll I, enjoy I mean, it the same way I enjoyed the Borderlands movie, where I open up Metacritic, see it got like thirty, and go, yeah. That, that, and I mean, that's my extent of connection to it. That's probably nicer than uh, Borderlands deserved, so we'll see. <laughs> um, we also had news um, the the Watch Dogs movie had wrapped. I didn't even know they were making a Watch Dogs movie. But, I didn't. Um, the fact it's wrapped is interesting. Um, I assume it's going to be following the first one? No idea. <laughs> I, I mean, know I've... like literally nothing about it. You put it in our chat, the, the Watch Dogs movie's wrapped. And I was like, that's a fucking Watch Dogs movie? <laughs> Yeah, it, which feels weird, doesn't it? I just don't know what what it's going to be or anything like that. Um, but it is based on, I don't know, but it's starring Sophie Wilde, Tom Blythe. So I think it's focused on a female perspective. So it's th probably just hackers is how I'm looking at it. Probably just hackers, yeah. I, I'm trying to read about it. It looks like nobody knows anything about this. No one knows anything about it, but what's more interesting is that Ubisoft are developing live adaptations of Watch Dogs, Far Cry, and the Rabbit series. <laughs> Hell <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Fuck we'll just, yeah. We'll just see what comes from that. Um, I can see Far Cry being really good, depending which one they ad uh, adapt. adapt. Five. Uh, five would be good. Uh, I mean, three would be really good. I don't think any of them would be good, to be fair. I, I think you could do them as TV series, as anthology series. 
That's all like, you do. I, I, much I, like... The problem is the Far Cry games are really good characters drawn down by kind of bland gameplay. Mm-hmm. So I think they'd all do really well as a film or TV show. Even 4, which I don't care much about, would do really well in that form of media because of like the undercurrent going on there. Yes. Of like what that revolution means and what that society they are implying means would go really well as like a film or TV project as opposed to a game where it's underneath climbing towers. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's what I mean. I think it would you could do any of those in I and I do think it would work probably better in a TV anthology, but realistically it sounds like they're gonna move into films and Rabbids is just coming in to be like a minions probably. Yeah, so. it's a minions. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which fine. is which is fine. Um and we also they have... bring back Rayman. <laughs> they won't. Um we also have uh, Devil May Cry is getting a animated series to Netflix, and the trailer dropped, and it looks pretty fucking good. It is um, cool. Uh, the it Dante is... voice actor is not back, but that's no. fine. The the new but... one they've got seems fun as well. So yeah. well, the and... new one is the guy who voices Nero. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, they just transferred <laughs> over the other guy. Oh, interesting. I, mean, I did not realize good that. that the Dante actor has not come back. Good. Why? Because he is a. Uh anti-vax right-wing conspiracist and um, they're like maybe uh not then maybe not then goodbye goodbye Bring yeah we would, on, he's good we, we wouldn't want anyone who's got demon blood to be giving any bad advice no <laughs> exactly um, but yeah that's the news of the month quite a bit floating around there um and lots of lots of pooping on people. But should we talk about what we've been playing then? Um, Let's talk about month? things which are not poop, hopefully. Uh, ho- hopefully. Um, what we'll probably do is we'll sort of flip between the two of us and what we're doing, because obviously Keris can't join in. But um, yeah. I thought I'd start talking about um, a game I talked about in the last recording that didn't occur, but is a new release, um, which is Black Myth Wukong. I've been yes. playing a fair bit of. Um, a game that people want to say is a Souls-like, but isn't a Souls-like. It's more of an action RPG, God of War-like thing that's more difficult. And because it's hard, people think it's a Souls-like. And it is difficult, but I think this might be one of the best-looking games I've ever played as well. Oh, it, nice. just, it just looks like everything looks great. The water graphics are brilliant. Each leaf seems like, you know, actually put on as a leaf, rather like, here's a cut and paste. Um, tree. Yeah, the only... brush the tree effect on. That's it. And the, the only things that people seem to be like frustrated with with this is, you know, there are invisible walls, but fuck it, invisible walls have always been in games. You can't. Yeah. Who cares? I don't really care. Um, and I think the difficulty of people, some people have been like pushing back at. Um, my big thing is that they just cancelled all the physical releases of the game and just turned it into a digital only. Um, but what can you say? It's it's really good. It's lived up to the hype of what it should be, and it's getting a lot of um, support from other developers. I think like the people who made like Stellar Blade and things like that have all come out and like yes. given their uh, like kudos. Like a new IP, new new studio, really in the grand scheme, making yeah. it and actually living up to the expectations. And it is really strong as a game. It's hard. It is tough. Um, I haven't beaten the game yet. I've got I can't where I got to last. I've, but I, there was like a, I had like a five phase boss fight at one point, which just blew my mind. And it was brilliant. But I was like, this is this is what I want to see. It's it's trying to do something slightly different, slightly new. And I love all the little side stories in it, um, which is I think part of the reason why I think it's films like it's not clearly telling you where to go, but it's yeah. very clear when they direct you. Go well, I've done I've done this. Da, da, da. You need to speak to this person. As long as you listen to them, you can find the next point. And people are like. But it's hard, you know, it's that sort of thing. Um, but it does have the lies of P thing where you, if you transport between locations, it's got like a little person next to it. If you needed to speak to someone, you know it's in that rough area. Yes. Um, so Basically. it's got a, it's got enough of a guiding light, a point. It's not as, you know, it's not the same as like a, a From software. You literally are, you do need to go online to follow some guides for yeah. some of the, the side stories because you're never going to follow all of it. But it's... It really, it really does hold up to par. Um, I'm very, I'm very happy I've got it. I just wish I had a physical version of it because then you could play it as well. I could. It has been interesting reading the online response to this, right? Because it sort of got heralded by, I'm gonna be honest and say probably dickheads, uh, as like the savior of gaming, and it oh, got yeah. uh, ragged on a lot in the wake of the uh, the whole Concord thing. 
mm-hmm. and people being like, oh, this is the real fucking thing. This is like, you know, the greatest bastion against all of what Concord's trying to do and rah, rah, rah. And it's been interesting in the way that it happens to every single game. And I don't know why I'm surprised every time. No. <laughs> but it had that response. And then recently it's been interesting seeing conversations come back about it. People going, yeah, it's good. Uh, it's, it's not like God's gift, but it's good. <laughs> I do think it's one of the best games of the year this year. Yeah. Um, obviously, there are games I haven't played yet. So I haven't touched Final Fantasy seven rebirth which i know everyone loves that but it's currently in my top five games of the year so it's 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 good yeah strange enough we're going to talk about three games at the moment who are which are in my top five of the year at the moment and this is one of them and yeah yeah, very very good strong solid combat that goes on there it's just i wish there was like parrying a bit more parrying stuff and you know it's just a lot of dodging but it's good it's really it's really solid it's really Really good um You've been playing a game with a bunch of dashing and dodging as well, I think. <laughs> I, I have. Uh, I went and played the majority of and then finished the new Prince of Persia, uh, The Lost Crown, I think it's Superb called. Superb game. Superb very, game. Very, very good. I love any game that has good movement. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I always say that it was on the podcast, Spider-Man. Yes. It's a game that is very good, but is elevated massively by feeling so good to play. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, it, it, and then something about this like a lot of the movement just feels so slick and like the jumping and dashing feels great the power-ups you get to like build upon that is really good as well yeah um, it, it feels wonderfully paced as a metroidvania as well sometimes you yes. get metroidvanias that you get your new abilities and you're like uh, this came too quickly or it came far too late this i don't think at any point do you feel you feel rightfully hindered at points where like, like just come back here. And they yeah. have that nice little, like you can leave a little tag on areas with like a little picture if, if you remember to do it. But I just think it's, yeah. And it looks amazing as well, doesn't it? It's it just, looks love- really nice. Yeah. I think, uh, to be fair, I had a problem with some of the uh, upgrades just because the puzzles they then led to made my brain hurt a bit. <laughs> uh, I learned from playing uh, Talos Principle mainly that I am really bad at puzzles that involve leaving a version of yourself somewhere. Right. And okay. so as soon as the game introduced that as a mechanic, I was like, oh, God, <laughs> I'm going to do so poorly. It, um, it, does, it, does, it does test you a little bit, doesn't it? I mean, that's, yeah. I don't think this is a... I don't think it's a forgiving um, Metrovania, but also at no point do I think it was an unfair Metrovania. No, it the, makes the you combat's a bit weird at times. Mm-hmm. Like some of the... Uh, there's a boss fight in about the middle, which is made massively more unfair by a move that if you attack while he's charging the move, does like three fifths of your health bar. But the tell for that move starting is about half a second long. Yes. So yeah. you can be charging it at him. You press square in between you press and square and the move connecting. He starts doing this move and you're like, well, <laughs> fuck me then i guess <laughs> guess i'll just die yeah there were there were bosses that it did feel like it's like oh you should know patience by now like, at no point has patience been part of this game no. so what am i now needing to learn it but, but they do it every like, game, don't the, they? the only issue i really had with it is i think it did a lot of interesting world building that it sort of left on the table right like uh, okay. i i talked about this with uh with my partner Lauren about a different game. Uh, let's briefly talk about Cat Game Stray. Yes, okay. uh, I liked I liked Stray. Mm-hmm. Uh, my biggest problem with Stray is I'm annoyed that they made such an interesting fucking world that you have zero ability to engage with. Yeah, that makes sense. I that's, think that's that fair. robot world is so fascinating, and I want to learn more about it. But because you are a cat, you are unable to, and it annoys me so be. bad. No questions asked. All you can do is sit by the guy playing a guitar. Yeah, I get that with I, this. Like, it, this had a lot of like I think the immortals as characters are really interesting, but also it kind of does nothing with them. And as yeah. you're watching them, I'm like, I wish you did more. Like there's a boss fight against one of them later on, mm-hmm. and after that, um, it sort of they they are fighting you because they believe you did something. 
and he asks you after the fight if you actually did it and you say no and he doesn't seem to really care yeah and it's implied that he doesn't really give a fuck if you did it or not he just wanted to fight someone strong yeah i know the one you're talking about and if that was all his motivation was i want to be i want to fight the strongest person i can rather than actually yeah the, right, the wrong thing yeah a lot of like interesting little bits there with them as characters that like doesn't feel properly explored and like yeah. the other boss fight he's a dick you beat him and he's like oh you i knew you didn't do it and then he dies and it's like what the fuck do you mean <laughs> What's it's, going on? I'm sort of hoping that they do more with this and do like another one. So I, I was really dubious when this came out because I like the original Prince of Persia and this is yeah. sort of like a real departure from them. Um, well, I mean, not a real departure. I mean, technically, this is a return back to the original, sort of, in a way, isn't it? Um, this is the second one I did, the original. This is the first Prince of Persia game I've played. Oh, really? Yeah, I haven't played any of the old ones. So I uh, I, I to go back and play them. So uh, I was... I'm a big fan of like the Sands of Time and all that sort of well, Sands of Time primarily, and then they went off on a bit more. But there's the ones, the one before that, which is literally like a 2D side scrolling yes. with like traps and stuff, which isn't really a Metroidvania, I wouldn't say. Yeah. Um, you don't really get abilities. It's like a classic style, classic style, like just jump over the puzzles. Um, but it was like almost a return to that. It's just it, it was an interesting uh, change, um, and I yeah. was concerned about it. And they've done a good job. And I, like I, I think it's a phenomenal it. game. I just think there are parts of that sort of plot and those characters that I wish they did a bit more with. Mm. There's like a couple of them you just meet, and they're like, ah, oh, you know, you're right, and yeah, yeah. And that's, that's basically the extent of their involvement in the story. You're like, okay, that would have been cool yeah. to have more of you, but. Yeah, I, that's, that's fair. Um, I think we uh, did talk in quite a bit of detail about this back in February's. Yeah, whenever you well. first played it. played it. It might be January, actually, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, talking of games where there are moments you feel a bit like, nah, that's a bit bland. Um, Star Wars Outlaws. <laughs> oh, game yeah. Playing this Funnily game. enough, another Ubisoft product. Another Ubisoft product, um, which is... It's strange. Everyone's been talking about how good it looks as a game. Um, I've not been as wowed, I don't think, as some people. I do think they've done a really good job in the cities, like making them feel alive. And the okay. Grand Vistas look good. Your little helper, Nyx, I believe it is, has some great animations. There are times, though, it just feels a bit blurry, is how I would describe okay. the game. Needs that um, PS5 Pro. I, it, I think it's a game that genuinely would work really well on there as long as they yeah. invested in the patch. Um, but I'm not really... like I love an Assassin's Creed game. Uh, there's something about them that just works for me. Um, and this is a very similar sort of clear the map, do this side quest, do yeah. this side quest. You've got different um, factions that you're trying to like work with. You can clear wanted ratings. You can do, like, it feels... It's, it's a standard Ubisoft um, sandbox. Uh, that they love to make. With There's sort of like Wars. gaming junk food. Yeah. It's like, I don't always want to meal, uh, eat like a Michelin star meal. Sometimes mm. I just want to like hunch over a Mackey's bag. That's and it. That is what a Ubisoft sandbox is. I, but this one isn't satisfying me. This this very much okay. feels like once you've gotten to the bottom of the bag and you're like, I shouldn't have eaten that. The and chips I feel like, are a bit cold. You're like, oh. Yeah, and I feel like I'm in that that sort of headspace and I, mm. uh, p- part of the issue is i think the the um the intro to learning to how to do it is too long for what okay. it is um the stealth doesn't work quite as well as they'd like it to work and obviously they want you to use stealth quite a bit so there's little bits in it that just don't quite work as well as i'd like them to use um don't get me wrong i think it's nice i think it's cool going out in the world and looking around and you know you see an interaction with some smugglers and some stormtroopers and you can go in and like fucking take some of the people out and then steal whatever's left there. Like, you know, those little world interactions yeah. that appear. But uh, I'm not really sold on the game. I'm, go- I'm going to go back and give a bit more time to it. It's, it's on my list of platinums to, to do, so I'm going to go back and try and give it more. But, like, I get, like that was about four hours into it, and I'm still like, nah. and, like, I shouldn't have... Not I shouldn't have to, but normally with these sort of games, I've got the sort of hook. Even with Rise of the Ronin, where there were bits where I was like, nah, you know, I know it's not the same game, but like this year I was like, oh, it didn't quite grab me. So there was still something engaging there. I couldn't tell you anything about the story here, but okay. you know, it's That's going on. It's just, um, I want it to be better. I'm hoping it picks up. It just hasn't yet. Yeah. Really. Okay. Um, but yeah, a bit bland landscapes, some 
open world areas um, and you're playing a game where you're creating colonies in big open land. Uh, in the <laughs> fucking <laughs> snow yeah uh, I have played a little bit uh, by which I mean I think literally only two three or four hours maybe yeah of uh, new release Frostpunk 2 which I'm uh, excited to play because um, I've not played the first one um, I it just cool. really like Frostpunk 1 uh, Frostpunk 1 is a mean mean game it suffers very heavily from um i don't quite know how to describe it but it's sort of like a cascade of shit okay uh there there was an old uh youtube reviewer called yahtzee oh and he yeah used, and he, zero he used punctuation. To, yes zero, he yes, used to yeah. talk about a concept in first person shoot it's called the cock up cascade Mm -hmm. and it was the idea of like you get seen by one enemy and suddenly three bases worth of enemies know your exact location yep and i think there is a similar concept of the cock up cascade in games like the first frostpunk the worst offender of it is a game called banished okay which i don't know if i've ever talked about banished on this podcast don't think so don't think Uh, so it's like a little town builder thing uh where you're just making a little colony of people in generic woodland Okay. And it's very much the same vibe as Frostpunk. Like, you have your number of workers, you have your bars you need to keep full, you need to keep them fed, homed, all of that. Uh, And both of these suffer from the problem that as soon as one thing goes slightly wrong, your entire game collapses. Right, And it's sort of like an unavoidable landslide. The the example in Banish specifically is with tools, because the work it takes to build tools is both uh, disproportionate to how long it takes until tools break and also disproportionate to how much of a negative impact tools have. Okay. Or like the lack of tools have. So if you run out of tools, it then takes too long to build more tools, so you can't make enough food because your food is being made slower because you have tools, so everyone starves to death. Yeah, okay. Uh, Frostbank has a similar problem where food's really hard to get and when people don't eat enough, they get ill, so you have not enough workers to make more food and then everyone dies. Right. Uh, yeah. Frostpunk 2 is very different. Frostpunk 2 has grown massively. It now is very much more like City Skylines if it were a resource game. Okay. So it's much more city focused. You still have to collect your oil to power the generator. You have to collect your food to feed your people. You have to collect materials so they're not sad. <laughs> it's basically yeah. like a luxury item. Um, also, for context, because I haven't described what the fuck Frostpunk is. Uh, Frostpunk is an alternate reality game set in the early 20th century where everything is frozen and people are just trying to survive. Yes, is it like 30 years after a cataclysmic frozen event? Or yeah, that is, and it, is it's, it's like a early 1900s. It's, the game begins in 1916. Right. So it's got like a big uh, undercurrent of it is progress and like mechanization. Like things I can start researching are like replacing workers with robots oh okay to, like, so it's, do a lot of robotics and uh decrease the number of workers they need but it increases tension or so makes makes sense frostpunk so it's that sort of like 1920s industrial revolution yes. robot style sort of thing steampunky uh, things yeah okay but what this does differently is it has much more of a focus on how your city operates okay the the law stuff in the first game felt like it was there just because they had the idea but didn't properly implement it. Uh, Like, it suffered a lot from... You had options of how to make more food, but they were sort of much of a muchness, and you always had to pick the same one because it made more food and you were struggling for food anyway. Right, okay. (laughs) This has a lot of stuff like you can uh, pass a law on how mothers are expected to act in society. And you basically either pass into law, stay-at-home mothers, or working mothers. Man, this this sounds like Trump's wet dream at the moment. So, <laughs> what this adds, which I think is a really good addition, and what really sets it apart from the first game, is there are now a number of factions that exist in your city. Yes, and I did they see all that. expect you to pass different laws and act in different ways. Okay. So I'm halfway through the story mode at the minute, and the main two factions you have fighting are the Stalwarts and the Pilgrims. And the Stalwarts are, like, big on society, they're big on the way the city is acting, and they are big on, this is our settlement and we must ensure it survives. 
Right. And the pilgrims are very like, we should expand, we should rebuild society generally, we should like do more of that. And in the okay. story mode, you sort of have to pick a side. But um, whenever you do a research item, you will have like two or three options and different factions will believe in different options. So you can pick right. your research path based on who you either have the support of and want to build that support or who doesn't like you and you want to make friends with. Okay, that's fine. And laws will be the same. There are like parliament sessions where all, f- all the factions have a number of seats and you can negotiate with a faction to say, if you vote for this law that you're undecided on, I will research this route of the factory's research tree for you. <laughs> It's quite, it sounds quite intense uh, thought-wise, then, as a game. It's, it's very intense. Whereas the first one was a lot of, you are balancing on a knife edge until shit goes wrong, and then your save is basically dead. Mm. This is like, you can see the fire burning, and yeah. you're like, I can probably fix that. As the fire gets closer and closer to you, you're like, I don't, I'm not sure, actually. <laughs> and then the pilgrims are revolting for the sixth time. And I'm like, yes, yes, I promise I'll put the kids in school. Just stop burning down your houses. <laughs> it, it's very stressful compared to the first one, but in a very different way. It's like it's taken everything it did well the first time and built on that. That's cool. While like taking that. out some of the, fun- the things that didn't work as well. But it's, nice. uh, it's very good. Sounds sounds planned. So going from a game that's very stressful to a game that's all about releasing stress, I've been also playing Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. Um, is it great? Which, which is a lot of fun. It is classic, <laughs> classic shooter. It's a classic PS3, three, Xbox 360 era shooter. Um, feels very Gears of War vibey, you know, like it's that sort of over the shoulder shooting. You taking on hundreds and hundreds of these little creatures doing doing like execution styles on them shooting them hitting them with chainsaws um working with a group of people and you know it's just good old-fashioned fun is how i would describe it um and just a really cool way of being set up i mean you've got the you've got the campaign mode which i think lasts about 10 hours which you can play with other people um which is why you've always got these two people with you you play a group of three and then you've got um a pve mode afterwards which is like doing the B mission and all the stories that you've been doing with other people on different difficulties and locking more things. And then you've got a PVP mode where you've got like four different classes that you can play as, and you can also dress these dollies however you want. Oh, it. perfect. Yeah, which is the big thing um, for PVP. Like you just play more and PVE, you can have like different painted outfits. You can make them look Good. different ways. You can like upgrade all your things. It's just, honestly, I think this is the most, it, it maybe showing age, but I'm like, this feels like what gaming used to be where yeah. it, there wasn't a lot of thought it was just like this is stupid fun i'm coming here to have a great time like this is the sort of game that realistically i know it doesn't work like that anymore you need to all have a copy and play online but this was the game that you'd have a bunch of friends come around for like a land party and you just try and play through the campaign together on a night or like on over a weekend or something when you're like, like- Every review I saw was like, oh, this is basically... Do you remember how PS3 games were? Yes. Yeah, it's exactly. back. That's it. Wait, I, was like, yeah. I, I literally felt like I was playing 360 again. Like, oh, this was like... Perfect. Back in. And, like, <laughs> I've sort of held off on it, and it sounds stupid. I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it, but I was like, I know you'll probably end up getting it at some point um, yeah. in the future. So I'm sort of holding off to go, you know like, what? We'll play it cool. together. Play through it together and just have like a good fucking time just going through and just killing shit and yeah. enjoying ourselves. So um, I will go back to it um, again. I've got a bunch of games floating around, but it's one of those ones that I really want to play more of, but I think I'll have even more fun if I'm playing with someone else. Yeah, exactly. Which is, that's, and that's what I'm going to say. Like, great game, great game. Um, one game that Carrie's been playing, and we've both been playing, though, uh, is Astro Bot, which I think is the game of the month, probably, for everyone. It is. Um, yeah. We both have the Platinum now. Yep. Um, I'm not going to try and spoil anything, because I imagine Carrie's will talk about it more next month as well. Um, yeah. But this is, again, classic gaming. This feels like that 3D platforming that we've been missing for a while as well, isn't it's it? You know, I don't... <laughs> so good. It's so good. It's like Mario Galaxy again. It's just, just like a nice, fun platforming. There are some frustrating moments in this because oh, they're like little bonus areas that can really drive you at the wall. But fuck me, it's just great. And all the cameos, and it's not to go through all the cameos, but all the cameos, 
every single time a new cameo came in, I was like, oh my God, this is great. This is great. I, I love this. You know, There this are a is... few I didn't recognize, and then there are a few where you'd see them and be like, oh, fuck, is it you? Oh, man. Hell yeah. And then you'd get costumes so you could dress as different yeah. people and stuff and redo your... I, the big thing I want to talk about, not a big thing, but like there was a bit where you can repaint your controllers yeah. um, for them to fly on. And I was trying to work out whether this was a very like clever marketing by PlayStation and these controllers may become real life at some point. Like whichever one's the most popular one. Either what's most popular or like if people are enjoying these, we'll start, you know, releasing them. Like there was the one with like pictures of all the characters on it. I used that like, for like the whole game. I loved here. that one. But like you feel like that's the sort of controller they're gonna end up releasing. And there are also colours there that it's let's be honest, it's not gonna cost them much to have a bunch of different coloured controllers, is it? Um, and if they if they've already upped the prices of them sneakily, then why not just start sticking different colours on them as yeah, well? The, the one that I don't think will get made, that neon one looks sick. Oh yeah, that was the, that was another one I was using it a lot of. But like, so good. But like Keris really liked there's a there's a pink one with like a white base or a silvery base, that and she's nice, like, that's yeah. cool. And she's like, yeah, but like, why aren't we seeing these sort of two dome controllers yeah. uh, going forward? I think it'd be great. Um, but yeah, love the game. I genuinely think it's one of my top games, if not top three this year. Um, it's very I, I hard think it's to in my top enjoy. three. It's, it's very very good. It's very hard to not enjoy it. There was no point in it. I was like, oh god, let's do that. It was like everything was like, this is fun. This is classic. This feels like, you know, as you said, Mario Galaxy, or you know, your crash, more like Spyro, I think, yes. more than a crash. But like maybe that sort of style thing. And you just you just have a good time playing. The, the only problem I had is that I wish there was more of it. Yeah. But also, <laughs> I respect them for not dragging it out. It feels like that game has every idea they had in it. And they just built the ideas they had to the best of their ability and then left. That, and I'm like, I, I, fucking brilliant. Perfect. Because of the style of game it is, I think it is the, the ideal length for it. Um, yeah. The so, only way that they could have made it like longer is potentially making the platinum tower, doing like challenge runs on levels for speed and stuff like that, you know, like you do with your crash. Sort yeah, of ones that's where... the only thing I'd think of. It's like, a, for an example, the old Sonic Adventures. Mm -hmm. uh, at level would have five medals. Yes. And it would be like, do the level, do the level without being hit, Do the, collect 100 coins as fast as you can. Yes. Or yeah, be yeah. rings in that, would it be coins in this? And it was that sort of thing. It was like just running through. Unlike Mario Galaxy, had the pranks of the comets, which were like, oh, you have to race a version of yourself, or you have to collect a hundred special coins, or. And it reused the same level geometry, but in different ways. But also, like I appreciate them for not dragging out. They said, like, yeah, we you did the level, you liked the level. Have go on to the next one. That's it. Um, but yeah, great game, great game. We'll talk about it next month when Keris is back and feeling. Well, I assume she'll be done with a hangover in a month's time. We'll see. We'd hope. We'd hope. Um, so let's move into PS Plus. Um, so PS Plus this month, good or bad? Uh, not great. I don't it's... think it's bad. I think it's small. Yeah, I think that's completely fair. I think that is probably the best way to put it. Um, it's a small month. But what's weird, I, I would almost err on the side of bad, just yeah. because there isn't like anything massive in it. But... I think this might be the month I've played more. I know it's the opposite for you, but I've played a lot more of the games this month mm. <laughs> than it, I normally it really would. Like, it feels, when you look at the list, like this game had another two headliners that got pulled last second. Yeah. But, yeah. like, I, I appreciate this one because it is a filler month, but none of that filler is bad. Sometimes there'd be a game at the bottom which was like, oh, that just looks shit. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, I, there's... nobody's going to play that, but this sounds like Road to, to 96, Chernobylite, Night in the Woods are all like real fucking decent indie offerings. They are. I, I think this is, as you said, I think this is a filler month. I think because obviously we've got next month, we've got October where we're going to get all the big horror games that potentially you've missed. So they're already going to put some big titles, I imagine, in next month. Um, I don't know if they will, but you'd assume we're going to get something like I don't know if it's already been on there, but like the quarry, I wouldn't be shocked if that shows up. The oh, next that'd be month. cool. I think that is on there already, but but you know, or like some of the know, other ones, maybe. But you know, something like that, especially as they're doing the Until Dawn remaster. So, you know, I am expecting something along yeah, those lines, or you know, or the Texas Chainsaw Massacre game. You know, that could yeah. show up in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something along those lines. 
Um, so you're going to get a title next month. So this is a filament. But being said, I don't think it was horrible. But if I had to choose good or bad, I think this is one of those months that is a bad month, even though it's still... I think it airs towards bad. I think it, like, I wouldn't be surprised if this one spaced itself a bit to give more attention to its big headliner. Yes, that's But, like, I feel like it could have used a couple more things to be like, hey, this is just an indie month. We'll pack it out with a bunch of indies. It just feels like it's missing a couple games. I remember scrolling and then hit premium. I'm like, is that it? Okay. Yeah. I, I, also, I think it's missing next month with horror. I hope we get classic uh, Resi two and three. We've already had those, haven't we? I think I we've had remember. one, and we've had the remakes. Mm. But like oh, premium, the classic ones. premium yeah. PS one, Resi two and Resi three. I think it'd be that'd cool. be interesting. That'd be interesting. Um, should we have a little look at the games who champion then? Let's do um, it. We'll do Keris's first, as so she's not here, but she's championing uh, Little Nightmares two. Um, cool looking game. Is- it's a great game. Um, I've gone in, I've platinum that this month as well. That's one of the games I've played. Um, it's a side scrolling sort of, it's, it's spooky enough and it's pretty, yeah. pretty cool atmosphere. Some nice little moments in there, a good little story that runs throughout it, which you get in through like no dialogue. You're just inferring from areas. Um, all claymation style. It, there are some difficult parts in there, mainly when you yeah. have to use a torch, but Overall, it's a really, really solid game. Um, I, I, I love played, how it looks. I love the ideas it has. I never played one, and I know three's coming out soon. So I'm like, oh, oh this will be, you know, all it was announced. So it'll be interesting to see where that goes. But I, I enjoyed it. I think it's a good game. I just, you know, it's not anything that's. I'm going to tell everyone to rush out immediately and play. Yeah, it's what uh, I need to go into. But I have one on the shelf. I just never played it. That's because there's no platinum for it, so you, you didn't want to play it. I, see, I, I think I, see I bought it. it for Lauren, and then she yeah. bounced off of it, and I was just like, ah, one day. Yeah, I think that's I think that's how I feel about these games. It's like a side-scrolling puzzle game where but or, these ones are all like, you grab this item, you move this item, you do this, but this had a little bit more to it, um, okay, cool. I do think. It's, and I do think that the general atmosphere of it is done really well, and it just looks really cool. Um, I think I got the platinum in about six hours on it, oh, which, which is you know the ideal length you want for this. Nice in and out. Game. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So Little Nightmares Two is Karis's, uh one. Uh, what are you championing then, Darren? I am championing Ubisoft Zone to bring them up for a third time. Uh, <laughs> Far Cry Five. Uh, the second I, best, the second best Far Cry game. The second best Far Cry game. I think this is a real gem that I think a lot of people didn't give a chance to because, yes. to be honest, it has a less interesting setting than three and four. Mm-hmm. But I also think it does more with it. The characters I, are more interesting. I love this dumb random chunk of Montana. <laughs> and oh all yeah, of the people in it. It's just it, like a cool cult thing, isn't it? This one with uh... it, it feels like three happened and three was great. Mm-hmm. Four happened. Four is also very good. I think four suffers from trying to do more of three, and also the things it adds being very weird. Yes. What? Why does four have a plot line which is basically depending on who you pick at the end, you either like back child soldiers or crazy theocracy (laughs) why are those my two options why is the bad guy the only one who's fucking right because these kids need to be shut down yeah 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 but like you get into this one the seed family are legitimately crazy but in a different way Mm -hmm. i i love i love joseph seed as a big villain i think he's fantastic i think they're all great they're all great Every character's great. I think the setting is a lot of fun. It mm-hmm. doesn't have as much like exotic locations, but it uses that to allow you to have more fun in just random American fields. It almost works because you can, although you're in Amer- random American fields, because you're in random America, I also, you hear, you know, here's a thousand random weapons for you. You go, yep, that's yeah, cool. I buy perfect. that. I buy that. Yep. <laughs> I, I just think it's a real good one. I think people like soured on four, then five came out and people were unfussed, and then six came out and sort of. Didn't kill it, but people weren't big on six either. No, I wasn't. I mean, I loved three, four. I was like, I didn't really enjoy. Five came out. I played it immediately and loved it. Um, and then six again, soured. But like, I, yeah. I'm waiting. For, we'll see what seven's like then. Five's <laughs> so good though. I, I recommend well, five. I love it. Yeah, brilliant game. Um, and then the one that I'm championing is the big title for this month. I would say, I guess, 
Um, Quidditch the, champions <laughs> with the plucky squire yes. um which is made i can't remember the company but it's an ex pokemon designer um okay. lead artist he, he went off and formed his own one um and you are a character called the plucky squire in a children's book and you're moving along on pages you, which is a really cool little mechanic that you go up it changes to a new page and you can then get you thrown out the book and then you've got like this 3d world that you interact yeah. with and you can then bring things into different pages you can move them back you can tilt the book to do different things um and it's all about a story of him going on to deal with i want to say Murberg, but i can't I don't remember what the villain's name is oh, humgrump. humgrump that's it um and take him on um and then there's a whole change later on and it's still your story of overpowering him like overcoming him and becoming a hero to inspire creativity in the kid that is writing the book so he doesn't give up um it's a nice little story nice little like moral idea behind it some cool puzzle mechanics and generally i think again it's adorable this, that is adorable and sticks so so much to its own art style and um, yeah. it's just endearing the whole way through is the way i look at it i i i found it so charming but i have i haven't played a lot of this i uh, about an hour in, if not a couple hours. Uh, hour. Um, yeah. I, I think it's so charming. I love a lot of its mechanics. Mm -hmm. I love how it sort of fucks around with its concept of the real world. Yes. Like it's... there are parts where it sort of adopts a different art style for a purpose. And every time it does that, I'm like, oh, that's, that's fun. <laughs> I like it that. Is... I do. I like those. I like the fourth wall breaking moments where they're yeah. clearly like they they're literally questioning their own reality. And they're like, well, if we're real in here to ourselves, and we are still real, even if those out there, like they all turn and look at you. And yeah. it's like, yeah, this is this is fun. Like it, it's a little tongue in cheeky. It it feels like that sort of humor you expect in like old school um, like kids shows, where yes. it's like it's clearly it's clearly for kids. But here's like a couple of jokes for you to get as an adult. Um, I don't know if we're the right audience for it necessarily, but I think we almost are. You know, it's 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 hard to tell. I I enjoyed it. I, at no point was like, oh, this is a bit of a chore. I was like, no, this is fun. It's, it's my fun my only it. issue I have with it is I think for the amount of combat it adds to that game, the combat mm. is severely underdeveloped. Yes, I agree with that. It, it gives a lot of tools to work with, but it gives you no reason to use them. You can just mash square and win. Yes, and you I, just, can. I, I think it could do with either having no combat and more puzzles or doing more with its combat. Well, even the trophy, well, the, tro well, the trophies are to get all the upgrades and buy, yeah. like find everything. And to do that, when I bought like at the final shop, I was at, I had seven of the currency left when I bought everything. I was like, yeah. Thank God I managed. And I was literally looking for everything. It's <laughs> so, but it's like so close to the wire. And there's a bit, of, it's a bit buggy at the moment. So if you go back to other chapters, it doesn't track what you've done. So you right. have to try and hope that you find everything in one playthrough, yes. basically. <laughs> um, but that'll probably get patched at some point. But yeah, okay. I think it's, I think it's a great free day one release for PlayStation. Um, and I think this is the problem is this is the star title, and it's a title that not really a lot of people were like massively looking forward to it. i think a lot of people were looking forward to it yeah but it's not like one of those games that people have been like i've got this date circled i can't wait for this it's not like some people would like take a day off work you know when a game comes out there's no one doing that for this title oh, like <laughs> so, our, our other day one releases were like another one this month and in the past we had like stray chia yeah. was a day one release i'm sure uh, so there's another big one Sea of Stars. Thank is, you. That, that is, is the other one. one I'm thinking of. But like, there are some that come out that like that. But this this does very feel like it's like a PlayStation Day One release rather than an Xbox Day One release. Yes. Yeah. Um, but still, great game. Still a great game. I liked it. Um, should we have a little look at our top five then? Let's go. Um, top five games in number five. We have MLB The Show. Now this is a game we, that's not going to be much for fun, everyone. Too much time into this. <laughs> We both bought it. We both got the plan for it. We both really enjoyed it. But um, if you don't like baseball, well, I mean, I trust, I'm not the biggest baseball fan. There's just something about a sports game, and this does it so well. It's, it's one of the it. better done sports games, I think. Yeah. It's a Sony product. Yeah. So, like, it doesn't fall into a lot of the same traps that the EA ones have. And I think it helps. Ones have. I want to say it helps that it's such a 
It sounds a simple concept, but it is. It's literally like you can either be throwing the ball or you're hitting the ball. Yeah. It's not like how does it interact with this person, interact with this person. It's very, very straightforward. It's just well, it's fun to play. Like you'll it. either enjoy it or not enjoy it. It's, it's yeah. either a game for you or not. Um, and if you like sports games, this is probably the one for you. Although there was a second sports game that came out this month, which is our number four game, which is Quidditch or Harry Potter Quidditch Champions, I think is the full name. I don't know why this game took so much of my time. Uh, we both got the platinum for it. We both yeah. probably put about 15 to Ballot, hours into think, it yeah. because of how long it takes to get the platinum. But it's fine. I had a lot of fun for the first like three hours. It's it's really enjoyable. I found it. It's weirdly, and I will say this now because I haven't uh, told you about this. Okay. The most dominant I have ever felt in an online multiplayer game. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I... My first PvP game, I had eight goals and two assists. I know that feeling all too well. And then um, I jumped into my second one and got fucking curb stumped. I'm like, okay. It's, it's real. Like, there doesn't seem to be any skill based match, matchmaking in it, um, which no. is interesting. Because of the nature of the game, I think there's a lot of younger people playing it as well. That's not to like shit on you either, there, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no, think, I think it's true. But I think there's a real sort of skill gap. A lot of people describe this like um, Rocket League. Um, yes. But I don't think that's a fair. Um, sort of way because you do have to play each role differently you do have to do, do I think there's a little bit more to this than there is to Rocket League but Rocket League is also very hard to master whilst I think this is a lot simpler to like I, I also master. think I don't know if it's because they're a smaller studio uh, the servers of this game are dog shit oh they are they are the amount of times I'd tackle someone the ball would go up in the air and then be back in their hand 10 feet behind me I'm like oh yeah. Okay. It's, it's weird. I mean, I recommend giving it a go. I've seen quite oh, a few. It's people. fun. It's I've really fun. And it's a very simple platinum as well, to be yeah. fair. Um, but you have to get to a really high level and you can just let you just let the CPU oh. fight each other yeah, and you just shows. win. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's whatever you want to do. Um number three, we have Far Cry five, which yeah. we've already discussed. Number two is Little Nightmares Two, and then number one is the Plucky Squire. A nice, a nice list. Surprisingly, two sports games in there, but what are you going to do? <laughs> we played a lot of them. We have. Um, and that brings us to the end. But before we go, should we have a little look at what we're looking forward to next month or the next sort of like four weeks or whatever you want to call it? So after this comes out, um, any games that you're looking forward to? Darren? I'm going to buy a big 100 hour RPG and then regret it because I don't have the time Ooh. to play it. What one are you going to be getting? Uh, Metaphor comes out next month, the new Atlas game. Oh, that's next month, is that's it? That's next Please. month. Uh, and I will probably be buying that because I'm a fiend. That's, I mean, it looks good. I'm, I'm excited by it, so I'll, uh, I'll oh, wait so, to see what uh, you do. I think the week that this episode comes out, uh, the new Zelda comes out as well. It does. It comes out and on the Friday, I think. I'll probably week. be picking that up as well, giving it a go. I'm it's... hoping I like this one. I, I think we'll like this one more than we like the other ones. This feels yes. a bit more like the style we want it's to. It's like an in-between, which I'm okay with. Yes, yeah, yeah, I get that. Um, Anything for you? Uh, well, for Karis, I think Silent Hill 2 is something that's on oh, her radar. That's coming out, yeah. Um, obviously, we've all been a bit up and down on Silent Hill 2, but I think everyone's in the positive r- column now, it, it, in general. It's looking better the more comes out about it, I think. Yeah, so... Excited to see what happens with that. And also we've got the um, Until Dawn remaster, which Thank again, you. I think she's also thinking about. Um, I do think the big one for this month, though, which is probably going to be the biggest time sink of the year for both me and you, Darren, is probably oh, Black fuck, Ops. Yeah. Because Black, Black Ops, Ops comes out. out this month. I think that's 25th of, 25th of October. That'll be out. So that'll be out before the next episode. Um, yeah, I think those are the games that we're all sort of uh, Very to. quickly getting a list up to see if there's anything major we've missed. Ah, oh, probably, but let's be honest, those are the ones we've we thought of, so we're probably thinking they're the ones we're looking at. There's um, only really one more that I think go for it. has what an impact it? on me, uh, which is the new Mario Party comes out next month. Oh, yeah, Mario Party Jamboree, don't worry, I've also yeah. got that like marked down, but I'm probably not buying it day one. I think that's going to be closer to Christmas with a family-style game is how I'm looking at oh, it. We should play some games a lot. I fucking love a Mario Party. Oh, I love a Mario Party game as well. Yeah. Um, but yes, that's it. That's it. Thank you for everyone for coming along for another episode. I know it was a bit um well, a bit back and forth. There's only two of us today yeah. and talking about games and without Karis there to throw in some humor, probably not as fun for everyone else. Um but yeah, thank you all for coming along. This is been Discount. Um if you want to find out more about us, do check us out at Discount on um Instagram. That's our main one at Discount Pod, um, which has all our updates, everything that's happening there. You can catch that on our individual ones at Discount Darren, Discount 
Josh and Discount Keris. We also stream three times a week on Twitch at Discount Pod. And we also have a YouTube where longer versions of these episodes go up and also all our streams go up there as well. Um, I think that's everything. Is that so. everything? Yeah. Well, we better finish soon before um, we get laid off by our own company as well. Oh, God. Um, yeah, but better move quickly. Yeah, thank <laughs> you for being our prayer for us. We'll catch you all next time. Bye. Bye.